Good evening, I'm Kathy Lewis. Welcome to What Matters. Tonight, a preview of the Democratic National Convention through the eyes of some who will be in Denver next week. Lisa Godley reports that with Democratic sights set on Virginia, passions are running high and the campaign is pulling out all the stops. The road to the Democratic Convention is paved with a lot of hard work by a great number of people, some more visible than others. But whether they're elected officials, volunteers, or the wife of the presumptive Democratic nominee, all efforts will culminate on August 25th in Denver, Colorado. Karen Franklin of Chesapeake has spent a lot of volunteer hours in anticipation of August 25th, and more importantly, November 4th. Well, I've been working as a street registration person. What I do, I have registration uh, information with me all the time in my backpack, and I just go up to individuals and ask them, are you a registered voter? And if the response is no, then I give them the opportunity to register to vote. And she's not alone. Well, we've been working for months actually doing precinct walks and doing phone banking, talking to members basically about the issues and trying to let them know where uh, Barack Obama stands on these issues and trying to encourage them to get out and vote for what we think is the right candidate in November. Volunteers like Franklin and Fleckinger recently joined elected officials, members of the clergy, and invited guests at ODU's Batten Arts and Letters Building to hear from the woman they hope will soon hold the title of First Lady, Michelle Obama. I am honored to be here. Michelle Obama sat with military spouses during a roundtable discussion where the spouses discussed their stories and concerns. Obama shared she and her husband's desire to improve the lives of military families and expressed their gratitude for the sacrifices they've made. It's that when our military goes to war or deploys at sea, their families go with them. Michelle Obama spent part of her visit here to Norfolk listening to the concerns of military spouses, at one point reassuring them that it's okay to complain. We're embarrassed to complain. Uh, and I think that's the great thing about America, uh, but sometimes it also keeps us from really facing the challenges that we have to face because we think we shouldn't complain, right? Ever. <laughs> no matter what. A lot of people, um, military spouses included, are living uh, alone in their struggle. Uh, because for whatever reason, because we don't talk about our struggle, we think, well, it must just be me. <laughs> I must be doing something wrong because I'm not handling all it, and everybody else must be making this work. Um, but the reverse is true. So it's important for us to, to, to get these issues out. She also reassured the crowd by sharing some of the policies that her husband plans to put in place that would improve their quality of life, plans like universal health care and a 21st century VA that would offer world-class care to veterans. The ideals and vision that Barack Obama has for our country. And I think that we as Americans must take hold of this vision because we need the change. That same sentiment was shared by many volunteers who may not be traveling to Denver, but will be perched by the television and pulling for their candidate just the same. Oh, I will be watching every step of the way. For What Matters, I'm Lisa Godley. Thanks so much. And joining us to talk about the convention and the campaign are Delegate Kenneth Alexander, who represents the 89th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. Dr. Quentin Kidd chairs the Department of Government at Christopher Newport University. Dominic Melito is a delegate to the convention. And Superdelegate and 3rd District Congressman Bobby Scott joins us from the General Assembly building in Richmond. Welcome to all of you and thank you for being with us. Um, Dr. Quentin Kidd, one of the things that we know uh, that we know in terms of trying to get the convention unified is that there was the big announcement recently that Hillary Clinton's name would be placed in nomination. What's the significance of that? Well, I think that w what that does is it actually helps guarantee the process of unifying uh, the party as they come out of the convention. If, if Hillary Clinton's name wasn't allowed to be put in, her supporters would go crazy and they would have a hard time then coming around at the end of the convention the last day and saying we're unified behind 
Barack Obama. Even though he would come out the party's official nominee, they would have a hard time with that, and it would create all sorts of turmoil and, and just disunity in the party that they don't need. It's just better for the party's sake to let them do this, to let to have a first round vote where it's a certain number of votes for Hillary Clinton, a certain number of votes for Barack Obama, and then do additional rounds where everybody goes behind Obama and 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 that's a done deal. And, and the Democrats have two conventions where they did not come out unified that did not go so well. So yeah, I mean, he, stakes think, are high. think back to 1968, think back to 1972. Both of those conventions were very contentious. Um, the party was split and, and, and the two factions weren't uh, uh, willing to come together and settle on a candidate, and in both instances, uh, the party's nominees went down in flames in the general election. Uh, Delegate Kenneth Alexander, uh, welcome and thank you for being thank with you, us Kathy. tonight. I'm, I'm always uh, glad to have you as part of the conversation. Uh, as you look at this uh, this convention coming up, uh, talk about that issue of unity and the the importance of that, and whether you think the uh, the opportunity to have Senator Clinton's name put in nomination will help that process. Thank you, great question. The purpose of the convention, one, is to unify the party. Uh, coming uh, off of a bitter or hard-fought primary and conventions and caucuses, uh, the, the purpose of the convention is one, to unify the party, and, and second, to nominate uh, the person who will be our candidate uh, for the fall. Um, so I think that Hillary Clinton's name going into uh, nomination for the first round is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, she has about 18 million uh, supporters who are adamant and who will be there fighting for uh, their person. And, but at the end of the day, we all will uh, come behind Barack Obama and we'll be unified leaving Denver. And, and you are an Obama delegate. Uh, Dominic Melito, you are a Hillary Clinton delegate. Yes. And so uh, what was that process like when you, when you got elected? I mean, did you, in the process of being elected a delegate, you clearly had to declare an, an allegiance, I'm guessing. Yes, yes. Um, and I, uh, I found out that, uh, that we were having the, the convention and that I could be a delegate, and so I submitted my name as a Hillary delegate to see if I could uh, end up in the convention. And you won, and here you are, and yes. heading for Denver. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. have, have, what communication have you had with the campaign itself, particularly in the wake of, uh, of Senator Obama's having uh, won the requisite number of, or appeared to have won the requisite number of delegates? Well, um, we were on a conference call a while back, um, pretty much, I guess, uh, early June or so. And uh, we've been in communique through email and, um, and, and additional conference calls, just mm -hmm. uh, trying to you know, line up what, what exactly the plan is. Uh, to and what by. direction have you been given in that process? Uh, right now, um, from what I understand, I, I hadn't heard that, that um, Hillary was going to be on the first ballot. So uh, we hadn't been given specific direction as of yet as to what to do uh, in Denver. But I am. But you were definitely not released. Not released. Yeah. Right. Now, some people, uh, and, and uh, Delegate Alexander, some people who are delegates to the convention who were uh, Senator Clinton delegates have made clear their intention to go ahead and vote for Senator Obama. That is correct, and, and, and matter of fact, I believe that's what put Barack Obama over the top uh, uh, Hillary Clinton uh, delegates defecting over to supporting Barack Obama. Uh, but I, I just to answer your question, your earlier question, mm -hmm. at the convention, uh, we will have the Rules Committee, Credentials Committee, and the Platform Committee. And this is where we will get uh, our instruction, uh, the meetings, the, the, uh, the party platform. Every four years, the Democrats um, reissue their agenda, mm -hmm. uh, their party plank or their party platform. We have not uh, uh, gathered all that information. It's forthcoming. Uh, they're keeping a lot of things very close yeah. for obvious reasons, uh, but we will have a great convention. So what do you expect there to be any hot button issues to come out of that platform process, or will most of the heat and the light be around the two primary contenders? Well, no, uh, certainly we have to talk about issues uh, and, of course, energy. Uh, we have to talk about the economy, uh, the recession, uh, the foreclosures, um, the gas prices. Uh, so, yes, it's, the convention will uh, unify the party. The convention will uh, give us a nominee, but at the same time, we have to uh, put forth an agenda for the American people uh, next, uh, uh, next week in Denver. Yeah. Uh, both of you have been to the convention before, correct? I have oh, not. You have not. I have, yes. And you have. I have, 2004. Well, you'll need to take him under your wing when, you, when you get there. <laughs> Just to, what, what would you say to a convention newcomer about the experience? Because I'm sure you went in with a set of perceptions that may have been changed once you got there. Yeah, um, wear comfortable shoes. Uh, <laughs> Good point. A lot of walking, comfortable clothing. Um, but be prepared to attend a lot of seminars, a lot of meetings. Yeah. Uh, there are some social hours, but more importantly, uh, take, take advantage of, of all of the, uh, all the great speakers, um, you get a chance to meet some of uh, the persons that you admire, 
and that you uh, you see on, on, on TV. Uh, they'll be there, very approachable. Uh, it's a great convention. It's a great mm -hmm. time for the party to come together to unify. And so expect at the end of the day, regardless if you're a Hillary supporter or Barack uh, Obama supporter, uh, expect to, uh, to unify before you leave Denver. All right, fair enough. And I think we have Congressman Scott on the line now from the General Assembly building in Richmond. Uh, Congressman Scott, are you there? I'm here. Oh, we have liftoff. Well done. Thank you for being with us tonight. I appreciate it very much. Uh, well, you have been be involved you, in uh, in these meetings, uh, I'm guessing, and in your in your leadership capacity in the campaign. I wonder if you could give us a sense of what's gone on behind the scenes to achieve this agreement about how uh, these candidates will be introduced and nominated at the convention. Well, I think the important thing to note is that the convention is an asset to the campaign. There are four days where we can present our nominee in the best light. Over the last 50 years, they have turned, they have really changed from nominating conventions to actually promotional four-day four, four promotions of the candidate. And we have to make sure that the um, that the campaign that the convention is designed in that light. And we have to uh, consider all of the different options and uh, how we can do that. Uh, the uh, decision on what to do with the other candidates will ha really has to be done in that light. Uh, we also have to note that the, according to the polls, uh, Senator Obama is doing as well with groups already as uh, Senator Kerry or uh, Vice President Gore did in the previous two elections. He's doing as well with women. He's doing well with other groups. So uh, the suggestion that the party is somehow divided going into the convention, I don't think is true. There are obviously people that worked very hard in other campaigns, and they're disappointed that their can candidate didn't win. But I think the uh, convention will be a four-day promotion of Barack Obama. We have to make sure that people understand the importance of this election. Uh, it, we have to change, for example, what we're doing with the budget. Uh, if we don't change the budgeting in, within about two years, in my judgment, uh, we'll be in severe financial difficulty, probably uh, unable to sustain Social Security and Medicare if we don't do something extremely quickly. When this administration came in, we had a 10-year, $5.5 trillion surplus. The Social Security shortfall for 75 years was only $4 trillion. So we had things pretty well under control. Unfortunately, rather than those 10 years uh, creating the $5.5 trillion surplus, it looks like they're going to come in at about a $3.5 trillion deficit. Uh, so that we have to come up with not only the $3.5 billion trillion dollars deficit, but also $4 trillion more to be able to sustain Social Security. So we have to do something. We have to change directions in the budget. We have to change directions in health care, in energy policy. And we need somebody in there that's not beholden to the oil industry if we expect to make any, make any, any, any progress crime policy. There's so many different areas where we really need to make a change. Uh, foreign policy, I mean, they've, they've ridiculed the idea that uh, Barack Obama is extremely popular worldwide. I think that uh, if you have a, a president that's popular, we will have a much better opportunity to promote world peace than we do now with our reputation very much damaged. Oh, so we need, this we need this convention to be uh, united, and, and the discussions have been in that light to make sure that our nominee comes out in the best light possible. Uh, Congressman Scott, the other, the other element of conventioneering that is a piece of this puzzle is that um, former Governor Mark Warner has been given a prime spot uh, in advance of Senator Clinton's uh, appearance. It's, a, it's the same spot that Barack Obama had uh, that really catapulted him to national uh, fame. I, I wonder if you would give us your sense of, of what's behind that, that placement and what it may mean. You know, it's ironic. I saw a poster, um, it just reminded me, when Barack Obama gave that speech four years ago, he was a, he was a state senator. And he, uh, four years later, is now a presidential candidate because of his, um, uh, because of primarily the launching of that, um, of that speech. Uh, we're extremely proud of, uh, of Mark Warner. He's, uh, ha he, frankly, has a prohibitive lead in this uh, Senate race, primarily because he did such a good job as governor. He cleaned up a financial mess. Uh, within a year or two was the best managed state in the union. Incidentally, I think uh, you know whose mess he inherited, and I think that's um, why he's doing uh, so well. It's, it's unusual that someone would be promoted in the next race because of the uh, good job that he did in his prior position. 
But uh, Mark Warner will do an extremely good job. He'll bring Virginia values, uh, fiscal responsibility, uh, sp especially fiscal responsibility to Washington, and I expect him to do a tremendous job as a member of the United States Senate. And uh, he will be promoted during the convention as a rising star in the Democratic Party. Well, and, and clearly, uh, all, all eye, or many eyes anyway, will be on Virginia, where the latest polling data uh, shows a very tight neck and neck race uh, between uh, Senators Obama and McCain. Uh, 48 47, McCain with the edge there, with a 4% margin of error, according to the most recent polling data I saw. Uh, what does your candidate have to do to win uh, this race that's so very close at the moment? I think he has to do what he's doing now, speak intelligently to the issues and run a good campaign. Uh, in previous elections, Democrats have not run uh, campaigns in Virginia. They've either not campaigned at all or campaigned a little bit and then pulled out, didn't put the resources in. Obviously, um, Senator Obama is putting a substantial uh, amount of resources in Virginia, campaign resources. We're registering people to vote. We're getting the wor word out. We're organizing and doing the kinds of things that will promote a uh, good turnout. I believe um, uh, running on the same ballot with uh, Mark Warner will be extremely, extremely helpful. Uh, and, and so I think if he just continues to do what he's been doing, uh, we'll be um, uh, in, in good shape. He, he needs to get the same vote that uh, Tim Kaine, Jim Webb, and Doug Wilder got uh, statewide and, uh, and, and run uh, close to Mark Warner uh, this year, and I think we can be extremely, extremely successful. We've had, had a tremendous success, particularly amongst young voters, and I think that's going to really make the difference. Uh, Congressman Scott, uh, one more question before we, we leave you. Um, the, as we tape this broadcast, we are not aware yet of uh, who, who Senator Obama will choose as a running mate. Uh, do you have any insights for us? Anything you want to uh, reveal to us? Uh, no, um, we're all pulling for uh, Governor Kane, but we just don't know at this point. He's got a number of uh, excellent possibilities. Uh, Senator Bayh in uh, Indiana, Joe Biden, uh, Senator Joe Biden in Delaware, Jack Reed in, uh, in um, uh, Rhode Island, uh, uh, a number of different, uh, different candidates and possibilities. So uh, uh, he'll pick a good one, and, uh, and we'll have a great convention. Uh, well, Congressman Bobby Scott, thank you for being with us today, a superdelegate to the big convention, and thank you for joining us from the General Assembly Building in Richmond. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Congressman Bobby Scott joining us uh, tonight from the uh, from Richmond, and where he is uh, engaged in business there and heading to uh, to Denver, as both of you gentlemen will be uh, very shortly here uh, for the big convention uh, coming up. Uh, let's talk about that whole issue of the vice presidency, because again, as we tape, we don't know who that's going to be yet. Uh, Quentin Kidd, you you don't you don't like necessarily Governor Kane's chances in this. Yeah, I I don't think that um, I don't. Virginia is going to play a very important role this year in the Democratic Party's uh, presidential campaign. It's going to play an important role in the election generally, much more important role than it's played in decades. But I don't think it's going to play a role that would call for two Virginians to have prominent spots at the Democratic mm -hmm. convention. So I think because of Warner's selection as the keynote speaker, it's less likely that mm -hmm. Kane is the vice presidential pick. You like that, I, that argument? I don't know. <laughs> um, certainly, we would be pulling naturally for our governor. However, if he's not the nom uh, not selected by uh, Barack Obama as a VP, uh, then we will support whomever Barack mm -hmm. Obama decides. As you think about that, uh, Dominic Melito, uh, certainly there have been a lot of conversation uh, about the prospect of Hillary Clinton be being the vice presidential mm -hmm. candidate. It would appear, at least according to people who watch this sort of thing very carefully and, and analyze who speaks where and where the chairs are placed and all the rest of it, mm -hmm. uh, that that probably will not happen. Um, as a supporter of Hillary Clinton, do you think that she's been treated fairly in this process? And, and what do you think about her prospects down the road? Um, I think she's certainly been treated fairly. Um, I think that there's there are a number of uh, different w capacities that, that she would be able to serve uh, in the administration, uh, possible uh, secretary appointments and, and such. So um, to, I think it's certainly we have not heard the last of, of Hillary Clinton and that um, 
she can do a lot to to keep us united and to to help uh, the victory in November and then uh, success beyond. Um, and, and Delegate Kenneth Alexander, what do you make of the positioning of of uh, former Governor Mark Warner's uh, speech in this process? Uh, Governor Warner is a rising star in the in, in the National Democratic Party. Uh, he has done an outstanding job as Virginia governor, and we're very proud of him. Uh, I uh, agree with uh, uh, Congressman Scott. Uh, he will uh, certainly address Virginia values. Uh, uh, he will talk about uh, fiscal responsibility. Uh, Virginia is the best managed state uh, under his leadership. Uh, he cleaned up. Uh, a he helped clean up Virginia. He inherited a, uh, uh, a mess from uh, former Governor Gilmore. Uh, we're very proud of uh, Governor Warner. I think he will represent Virginia very well at the convention. And yet we come back to this poll that shows neck and neck. And I wonder what you, what I, you make I, of that. I actually think that poll is probably, and, and that, and that if, you, if you look at all the polls that have been done recently, Virginia's basically split. That's within the margin of error. I don't think it's, I don't think you can say one or the other's ahead. I think that is actually good news for the Obama campaign and bad news for the Kane campaign, or the uh, McCain campaign. And I think it speaks to one reason that Warner is so important to Obama's campaign, and that is, in, in, in all things being equal, the Democrat shouldn't be tied with the Republican at this point. Uh, Virginia is a conservative state, a, a sort of a right-center state. The Republican should naturally be ahead, even if it's by a few points. The idea that they're tied suggests to me that the De McCain supporters are, are, are somewhat depressed and the Obama supporters are somewhat energized. And having a Warner, uh, John Warner, uh, Mark Warner on the ticket and, and elevating his presence at the National Convention like that adds energy to the Democratic supporters of Obama in Virginia. So I think there's a larger sort of thinking about why to place Warner where you're going to place Warner. And my understanding is that, uh, is that, that the polling the Obama campaign has done in Virginia shows that Warner really helps him, that there really are coattails for Obama. That Warner really does help Obama, and so the extent to which you can add energy mm -hmm. to the Warner supporters, you you help Obama. Well, you know, it's an interesting argument because if you look at certainly at Central Virginia and Southwest Virginia, uh, where Mark Warner is very popular because during his campaign for governor, he went out there and spent a lot of time right. in those parts of the state, and really in, in those parts of the state, and uh, those people, if you talk to them out there, they will tell you they feel like he really um, understood what they were up against yeah. uh, economically. Uh, you know, it, it's an interesting strategy. So we'll see. Well, and I, we'll you know, and I think the the the, the uh, I think the soft underbelly for Obama, as funny as that sounds, is the military spouse vote. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, everybody says, well, the military is really going to help McCain. I really think there's a soft side there for Obama, and I think it's predominantly in the spouse. Which, um, which, which is interesting, which, since which explains why Michelle Obama's yeah. here. And, and 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 when Obama was in Virginia Beach, it, it was eighteen thousand people. Um, mm. So okay. I, you know, I think the McCain people make a mistake by saying, well, the military vote will help us. Uh, to be continued. Thank Thanks so much to all of you for Thank being you. with us and congratulations you. on your, your appointments. I'll be back in just a moment with a final thought. It's easy to get caught up in the mad dash of daily life, but I saw something this week that stopped me in my tracks. A group of geese struck out to cross busy Monticello Avenue in Norfolk. Traffic was coming from all directions, and I braced myself for something pretty unpleasant. But it seems there's just something about wildlife trying to navigate civilization that strikes our sensibilities. And before long, cars, trucks, and even a city bus came to a halt to let those geese pass. Now, it used to be that geese were rare in these parts, but all those golf courses and office parks we've built in the last 20 years are apparently pretty good places to raise goose families. And now the geese one wondering why they ought to go back north when they have all the comforts of home right here. In Loudoun County, the geese police of Virginia use specially trained border collies to give the geese the eye and get them to move on. Goose control is becoming an issue here, I know that, but somehow the wonder of Wednesday morning on Monticello Avenue is that just for a moment or so, a dozen or so individuals, each with their own agendas, decided to set their needs aside for what we all determined was the greater good. Kind of makes you wonder what might happen if we could pull that off a little more often without the geese. Thanks for joining us tonight. Don't forget to check out our website at whatmatters.tv. That is where you can register your thoughts 
on this or any other broadcast and where you can learn uh, more about uh, our work and about the guests on this broadcast. Uh, we would also love to hear from you by email at uh, uh, whatmatters at whro.org or 889-9437 or of course your faithful postal service will get your mail to us as well at 5200 Hampton Boulevard, Norfolk, Virginia 23508. Next week, a similar look at the upcoming Republican National Convention from the eyes of some who will be in Minneapolis for the big convention. So I hope we see you next week for another look at What Matters.